Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the podcast. We are your boys, the Timeless Gamers. Uh, my name is Sergeant Warpath. Don't you know me? Hey, what's hey, hi, hi. <laughs> Some of us are a little, a little, you know, happier than others. All that good stuff. Oh, I'm trying to pull up this Google Doc for my introduction. So we've done this before. A little deja vu going on. Yes. But we got to redo it. Technical difficulties with some of our crew members and um, our platform in general. But now we got it all worked out. We're going to start fresh new. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. It's great. It, it happens, got a little it more experience. Little, little experiments here and there, but yeah. we'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sorry that my room is a little bit darkish and whatnot. Um, and all I got is my little ring light, and it's not even at full force. And the reason being is because it's hot as fuck right now. <laughs> it creeped the fuck on us. Like, it was crazy. Can't believe it just creeped on us like this. Yeah. yeah. No, it did. It was like 63, 67, but it really felt like 80 yesterday. And then today it was like 91, but it feels like 110. Have fun. Yeah, shit, it's creeping <laughs> up. Like, I, like, I'm even like tipping my hat up, dude, just so I can get some like some airflow up in that. <laughs> breeze up in this motherfucker. Like, everybody knows like, from my stream, you know, everybody knows that I wear hats. That's that, that this is my thing. This is my, my thing that I do on stream. Like, this is what represents me when it comes to, to my stream itself. But fuck, man, it's hot as shit. Yeah, and I'm just out here looking like a tan Tasmanian devil, just <laughs> with the fresh haircut, ready to, ready to Get just the eat fuck something. Up, Gucci. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Put me in. They don't want it. They don't want it. <laughs> well, today we're gonna be doing a little bit of introductions, and of course, we're gonna be talking about games. That's what our platform is all about. The Timeless Gamers is a combination of myself. I'm from the old, old guard all the way to the new guard that's where gucci comes in right i was born yeah. in 1985 so the nes was the first console to actually or or that's the first time that that console finally hit the um the west right because it used to be in japan it used to be called the famicom and now they decided to change it into the nintendo entertainment system that's why we call it nes and then you we, we will have gucci for all the new era uh type deals when yeah PC and all that good stuff. So. so I was born in 2001, yeah. and so obviously Nintendo is like old for me. That was the the old stuff. Like I barely touched the Atari. I was like, get this old ratchety VHS looking <laughs> thing out of here. Get that out of here. And but yeah, no. So I heavily grew up on uh PlayStation and Xboxes. Definitely the big console. And then now I obviously switch over to PC heavy. I am planning to get an Xbox Series X um but yeah that's good that is good i'm happy for you about time i know i just want to get it because i might as well i pay for the ultimate and like i'll just get a bunch of free games on there and there's some console games that okay. like just refuse to come to pc and it irritates me oh so you're pretty much you're pretty much gonna be uh what's that called you got you got the game pass as well i take it yeah oh of course but yeah no i have the ultimate just okay. because they have, they have that deal I told you about. Oh my God, one dollar for the first month, and then the next two months free. Bro, that's and fucking. Then and then it's fifteen ninety nine. I know. So they're basically giving me three months for a dollar. Hey, all I got, all I got was that one dollar. Dead ass. Like they're like, oh hey, have ultimate for a dollar for this month. Oh, for the next three months. That's what it was. It's a dollar for three months. I was like, well shit, I'll, t yeah. I'll do that. That's still a good yeah. fucking deal. One hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. Holy shit. For sure. So many PC and console benefits. Yes, yes. I think, I think the 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 immersion or, yeah, the immersion. Yeah, the immersion. That's actually the proper word I was looking for. So the immersion of like the Game Pass, Microsoft, and PC and Steam all together, is like, bro, your library is insane. Like, yeah, I love Sony. I love Sony. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love the PlayStation, all that good stuff. But I mean, let's be for real here, man. My library. It's fucking unlimited, dude. Like, yeah. Hey, my yeah. library is ridiculous. Like, I almost want to get, wanna get it. I don't even know what to play. Like, yeah. No, for sure. I definitely, if I get get enough excess of money, I would love to get both consoles. Um, just because I was like a PlayStation kid, and then like especially PS3, 
way better than the 360. Way better. Yes, yes. No, so many people are so mad right now. Just no, like I, absolutely. Just that I said that. But. Absolutely, but I can't. I can't be mad. I actually do agree. I had the 360. I was a big fan of the 360, and I loved the 360. But I also bought the PlayStation 3, and then I pretty much stored my 360 right after that. I was just, yeah. The exclusivity I, of games is a big deal for me, right? I wasn't much of a PC gamer back then, so the, ex the having video games that are exclusive to a console is a big deal for a console player. Yeah. Period. I don't care what anybody says. It'd be like, oh no, we don't care about exclusivity. No, yes you fucking do. Yes you do. You do. Because when let you me have tell you, back in the day, it was really bad too. What game? What'd you say? It's like, so so you have that 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 ex exclusivity, right? So think mm -hmm. about it this way. You have a game that most likely looks beautiful as fuck. I example, God of War, right? It's an exclusive game for the Sony. The Sony PlayStation, yeah. right? How many people want to play fucking God of War? Fuck, I do. I do. If you guys yeah. actually, if, if I wish, I wish I could show you guys. Like, let me let me move my camera. Like, come on. I even have a statue up there. Like, I bought when when they released God of War again, right? I bought that game, and I had buddies of mine that had play that had Xboxes, and they're like, bro, let me use your PlayStation then. I was like, why, why the hell would I lend you my console? It's the only thing I have to play. I was like, that's not true because you got both consoles. Like, yeah, but I'm not going to use the other console when I have this console. So exclusivity matters when it comes to just console gamers. That shit matters. It really does, yeah. If you have 100%. games that come out, yeah, if you have games that come out on both consoles, then that's great and fantastic. But when you have games that are look that look extremely beautiful and they're only on just that one fucking game. Like, come on, you can't beat it. You can't beat yeah. it. Yeah. No, early on, I definitely would say PlayStation, like the PS3, Xbox 360 era, PS3 definitely was reigning uh, dominance. They had The Last of Us, God of War, they were really, really killing it. But 360 definitely held in there. Um, yeah. Xbox did with, uh, what was it? I always called it the Power 3, um, yeah. Halo, Gears of War, and Forza. It. Those were their Power 3 for sure. That's but it. now. Um, just with Microsoft has just become a conglomerate buying Bethesda and oh my goodness I mean yeah Xbox really with the one Xbox one and the PS4 Xbox one was like okay let's this get, is cool let's, let's just go ahead straight. and buy everything let's get something straight that Xbox one is trash I, I am so sorry I don't care about what anybody has to say that PlayStation 4 fucking destroyed Xbox one a day don't get it twisted new era of gaming when the game pass came out it was just too late for the xbox one it was too late 100 percent, it was too late but this new xbox the new generation xbox with the with the library that it has and the immersion like i said of all of this including now riot coming in into the picture and bringing these um these riot games now into the game pass like come on you got valorant you got league which is like the best moba ever it, it's it's over it is over yeah. right now. Yeah, pretty much this is going to be their final statement. I mean, it definitely is not even a competition at, anymore. Like, they passed them up, and they're just like, how far can we, like, go ahead and excel yes. past them? This but is uh, the, This is the moment where you could definitely say exclusivity does not matter. Yeah. At all. Um, but I will say, though, on Xbox One, oh, Rough Star. I'd agree with you right then and there. Super Rough Star didn't compare to the PlayStation 4. And then it came out with the Xbox One S and it was like, oh, okay, okay. And then the Xbox One X. And it's like, that's kind of like where they turn, turn the script toward a later. But at that point, Xbox Series, or not the Xbox Series, but the Xbox One X. I think that was like two years before or a year before the new consoles came out. So it really didn't matter at that point. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, I know we got a little bit, we got a little bit sidetracked because you know we we this is what we do, guys. This is what we yeah, do. We're it's very, gonna happen all the time. Yes, we are very passionate about video games. Believe it or not, we we definitely were very, very, very passionate about video games. But at least you guys get to know a little bit about us, right? Um, if you guys don't catch us live, that's not a big issue. But we would definitely be live. Um, make sure you guys follow us on all of social medias. We do have Twitter, Instagram. Um we will have tiktok as well and we will have facebook uh eventually right now for a fact i know that we have open twitter and we have open tiktok at the moment 
uh, we will definitely have uh, the Instagram and Facebook open eventually. And I hope you guys follow us on all those social medias because that's when you'll know when the podcast is actually going to go live until we actually have a steady schedule where we'll decide, yeah, we're going to do it every day. At, we're going to do it on this day at this hour. That way you guys can always catch us live. But if you don't, guess what? You guys will be able to catch us on YouTube 100%. Sometimes you'll have some raw and uncut content for you guys where we're just doing the podcast, download, and upload. And then, you'll, of course, we'll have moments where we definitely want to edit certain uh, episodes that are probably long. And we just want to be able to give you guys the straight up content that matters and not just a rambling conversation uh, about a topic that's going way too long on, on a podcast. Uh, the reality yeah. is conversations that go long on a podcast is when you go on to catch it live, right? I, um, like, for example, Joe Rogan's, he, I know he goes, I love Joe Rogan when he does his podcast. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it with his podcast absolutely nothing wrong with it but you know sometimes he does get into these conversations where you're like well that's that was that was a long topic yeah but that's just how he is that's his way of doing it but if you actually look in youtube on his episodes some of that stuff is actually cut out which makes sense that's what we do um but yeah just so you guys get to know us a little bit about who the timeless gamers are like i said oh yeah no, 100 yeah my name is our it's sergeant warpath um i'm actually a united states Army active soldier. I'm um, actually currently a staff sergeant in, uh, in Washington, the JBLM. Uh, I think I've been I've been playing games like, like forever. Uh, I was born in 1985. It was the bre- first time that the NES hit the West, uh, but that was not my first console. Actually, my first console was my father. My father brought my first console ever. He used to be a truck driver. Crazy, but the first console he actually brought it was this giant ass fucking brick of a console dude the sega master system that thing is is extremely huge like the cartridges was like weird there's like a very rectangular cartridge i like i i'm gonna bring an image up too bro so you can like you can see what i'm talking about that it, it, it's so funny it's so funny i'm gonna bring up an image real quick uh let me see if i can find that so you guys can see how old i'm actually am okay don't now don't fuck with me okay don't 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 do it what is it, Sega Master System? Yeah, Sega Master System. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, if you got it, yeah, bring that up. Like, that was my first console, bro. That's <laughs> the black one. It was that? Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that was my first console ever, dude. That thing is huge. But, man, what wonderful times I had with that, with that console. Um, And I got instantly hooked. And that was the moment I decided, yeah, I want to do something. And and this is me being a kid. Like, as I kept growing, I got new consoles, of course, and new games and whatnot. And I was like, man, I really want to do something in the gaming industry, right? Whether it's designing games, whether it's doing art for the games, whether it's me streaming, whether it's me just, just being something a part of gaming. Like, even being a tester. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one of those things where I just wanted to do something. That's how I fell in love with video games. And I do take video games very seriously. And uh, the, the route that video games have been taking so far into the future, I'm not really happy how that's looking like. Um, but there has been some games that do break that mode. Uh, example, Elden Ring. Like you can't, you can't fuck with that game. I'm sorry, but that's like a full complete game, properly done, not asking you to buy anything else. You go in there, explore and power up on your own. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about myself, guys. It's just one of those things. Uh, I love video games, and I'm here to keep the old guard fucking alive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, being born in 2001, um, I don't. I'm pretty young still, so definitely don't have as much of a a footprint or a hold on family. But yeah, no, I'm uh, in the army too, and that's actually how we work. This is my work dad. I don't know because he's he's old. But <laughs> I'm some though. No, yeah, with, <laughs> respectfully, respectfully. I'll see you at work. <laughs> yeah. So, now nah, my my first like console that I really remember playing is like the Nintendo GameCube stuff like that. Like, uh, and that was still really early on. You know, I feel like Great most console. people my age. Yeah, Great. I feel like most people my age don't even haven't ever touched that. Most of them were straight into like the PlayStation Two, or the Xbox was like their first consoles. But no, I remember playing the GameCube and taking that shit out, blowing in there, dusting your eyes. I was like, God, 
seizure. You take an acute no. a Q-tip with alcohol, just like. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, Mario. Uh, what is it? Mario Party. Yeah, went, we went ham on that, on that console. No, it was yeah. fun. But yeah, no, I definitely would say that uh, I'm a very picky gamer, but at the same time, I'm not. So like, I'll play any game, but if you want me to put hundreds and hundreds of hours into a game, it has to be like perfect. So like slowly over time, I started out just playing Call of Duty. Like I was in like a, like a clan growing up, a quick scoping clan in Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. Uh, so like I was all Call of Duty, first person shooter. And then now you can catch me on Forza drifting and catch me on Madden throwing a football. You can catch me doing crazy stuff on Rogue Company all the time with the boys. I mean, we've been testing out games, all sorts of games left and right. I've definitely had like an MMO um, burge, if you will. And there's a lot of MMOs that have came out in the last two years. Um, I just feel like none of them are close enough yeah, to perfection. Yeah. Um, and that's just mostly because we're turning into an era of uh, microtransactions. Buy this, buy this, pay to win. And it's really annoying. But that's all right. We're here that's to give honest reviews for a reason. We're here for you to judge these mud chuckers. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> give them a yeah. kick in the butt. Don't get it confused, guys. Even though we're, we're here for the podcast and, and, and we're here to enjoy video games, we are not going to be shy about talking how, how trash a certain game is, how good the game is, or what's good about it and what's bad about it, period. Like we are going to disseminate these games. We're probably gonna test early, early access games and we are gonna give our honest review on on these early access and then we're gonna give it also another uh, rating afterwards once the actual full game comes out, right? Because we wanna be fair about it. We know we don't want to just give you an early access review and then that's it. This is what we think about the game and we don't care if the game comes out or not. No, that's that's, that wouldn't be fair and it would just kind of be credit us i guess when it comes to that type of stuff um it's always good to give you guys the honest review and whatnot but hey if there's a game out there that you guys are playing and we just consider it straight trash listen if you get your little heart destroyed i'm sorry but we're here to tell you guys the truth about things right there's a lot of mmos out there right now that people are like they're they get they get really annoyed when they talk about these certain MMOs, I guess, right? We're talking about uh, Lost Ark. Um, oh, New World, New Fallout 76. Yeah, you got okay. the High Isle, the, you know, Skyrim exactly. Online, All whatever, Elder Scrolls Online, like, whatever. Oh, what, what about this? But what about that? What, what, Black what, Desert what, Online. I got a bunch of them. I got a bunch of them. It is what it is, right? Nowadays, you got what? Diablo Immortal, everybody's playing on it. Well, too bad. Diablo Immortal's trash. I hate to say it to you, it's trash. It's great graphics, it plays well, but the fact of the matter that you have to pay to get where you need to get at, it's just not worth it, and it's just trash. It makes Blizzard look horrible. But that's a topic for another day for sure. Um, so we're definitely gonna be talking about all of that in one day. Yeah, and we definitely will go further into the game, because obviously they came out with Diablo Immortal to literally just feed their fans, get a little bit more budget money, for their for Diablo 4 like it's literally was a political move that a corporate made and that's what you got you got exactly what the what corporate decision made for yeah. you yeah. yeah it's definitely a corporate game you you are so right about this yeah you can you could brand it however you want but that's the realism of it oh yeah, well, yeah. just so you guys know this is the way we are we're gonna definitely run things um we're gonna be we're gonna be doing our ratings of course eventually i'm gonna have little graphics for you guys on on screen when we actually do use um we're gonna be basing we're gonna be basing ours on hourglasses because timeless gamers it's just okay. um so we're gonna base it on graphics we're gonna play uh base it on playability and replayability we're gonna base it on smoothness we're gonna base it on the story on the controls and on the content that these games will have so all of this will compose into an average and it will go of course from one to five hour glasses. So five hours, five hour glasses making it a stellar game. It is a must buy, in other words, for us, right? It's one of those things where you're like, we're gonna I'm gonna give it five hour glasses. Everybody individually will give it a rating, and then average will come up with a a, a fair assessment to the game, letting you guys know, hey, you know what? This is definitely a must-buy game. 
this is something you want to buy, this is something you can play, and it's worth, it is worth your dime. That's all it is. So, eventually I'll have some in graphics and whatnot, but we're definitely going to be talking about a game tonight, and we are going to give it our definitely good, good rating. We're going to be talking about Rogue Company. It's been a long time coming since its releases, uh, since early access, actually. Been yeah, it's been in the beta for, uh, I'd say, I don't know, I'd have to look up the exact answer on that one, but I would say two years, something like that, maybe yeah. over a year yeah. for sure. A hundred percent, because I remember playing Rogue Company when it was even announced. It started getting announced when it, in Smite, because I was playing Smite and I was like, what the fuck is this Rogue Company shit? You know how those those little newsletters on the side, I was like, what the fuck is this Rogue Company? There you Company? go. July 20, 2022, yeah. or 2020, 2020, my bad. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure I am 100 Almost two years, yeah. Yeah, it's almost two years. And I'm pretty sure, because uh, 2021 is when, what, when COVID hit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020, 2021. 20, kind of it was 20, yeah, 2020 is when it first started coming around. So when things were trickling early, yeah, early, yeah, early, early 2020. There's no shadow of a doubt. I'm pretty sure it, the, the actual release would have been earlier because of the people, you know, you can't go to work, this and that. You got to work from your house. It's hard to get a whole crew together and doing all this stuff and whatnot. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there was some some backdrops and uh, heartaches in trying to develop the game even further. Oh as, yeah, as for sure. Through. So, but so we're gonna we're gonna definitely be talking about this. Um, so you guys know the game actually launched fully. It's a full launch game. It's it, I'm gonna be yeah, recently. I'm gonna be honest with you. Best launch. So far on this type of game i think this game brings its own genre i that i really oh, truly yeah. believe it i i think this game it's its own genre this game it's its own thing and believe it or not some other games are already trying to replicate what this game is and when a game is getting replicated to kind of be what this game is then you know for a fact that this game is its own genre Okay, and this is the way I'm gonna think about it. This this is how I'm going to display it. Rogue Company is a third person shooter tactical battle arena. I think that's I think that's exactly what this is. I wouldn't call it a battle arena. I'd call it more of a death match or just leave it as third person shooter. Because a battle arena to me is like a battle royale. No, 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 no. Because a, a battle a, that's that's where MOBAs come in. Because MOBA is is a multiplayer online battle arena there is tactics there is tactics in moba but i feel like you have an arena and depending on what you're playing right if you're playing team deathmatch got it and all that good stuff but most people when they go into rogue company they play demolition demolition is extremely tactical and that's exactly what it is it is a tactical battle arena you're there you get one life you go in you know and, and execute make the best of it um with with the teammates that you have whether they're good or trash you know what i'm saying it's i i think it's its own thing yeah. they the labeled it as a team-based multiplayer shooter yeah okay so okay okay perfect i, I would team just based. label it as a shooter yeah because you don't you don't really call cod it's like a third person version of cod but more strategic obviously and i want to call cod a oh, battle with, arena with, with better everything by the way oh yeah, yeah. for sure yeah, we're gonna be moving into our big screen guys so you guys will have the the launch video on replay and all that good stuff and we'll start talking about it right all right let's see we are go ahead and start all right so this is this is road company right here guys this is this is amazing this is actually the launch animation um trailer that came out oh He's, hey that's you there, yes there was yes you. that's it? me right there yeah, boy cannon yeah the Viet castle yeah. Yeah, the, just so you guys know, I'm a Canon main. Um, Gucci here, he's actually a Mac main, but he's actually pretty good with a lot of operators, okay? So the game yeah, is based very on... very diverse. Absolutely. The game is based on operators. So every operator has its own abilities and its own tactical, right? You can... They also will have their own their own type of loadout. Some, some will have some machines, some will have assault rifles, some will have light machine guns, some will have grenades, some will have C4, some will have adrenaline spikes. So it, it all depends, right? I think every operator in this game is extremely viable. So I think Hyrus did an amazing, amazing 
way of doing this. No operator is useless in this game. Some operators might be a little bit weaker than other ones, yes. But at the end of the day, every operator is extremely viable depending on the chemistry and uh, of the of the team. A hundred percent. Oh yeah, no, there, there's a big dynamic. And yeah, like he was saying, every operator is gonna have two classes. So like right here real quick that I have minimized, this is Anvil, this is one of the operators and he has um, light machine guns and I wanna say shotguns. So that's uh, the yes. two that he can use. And so that's just a, an example. Um, there's only three classes that use sniper rifles and that would be phantom runway and fixer those are the only three right now but at the same time what i love doing too is i'll drop a kid and then i'll pick up their their rifle whatever they're whatever they have if it's good and then what sergeant warpath likes to go do is see that there's a sniper knows that i love sniping and take the sniper from me so it's you know what <laughs> whatever yeah it's kind of weird seeing this big brolic boy named Requise over here grabbing a sniper rifle that looks like he could literally bend it in half but, but whatever but good hey, shot whatever, yesterday though whatever floats your goat <laughs> that, that was a good shot yesterday though oh <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i think this game is fucking amazing and i think we should start going down the pipeline and talk a little bit about our rating on this and i'll give my opinions on every rating you'll give your opinions on your ratings and then we'll go from there because i think this this game honestly is too good man too good graphic wise graphic wise this game is freaking amazing uh i think for what it is graphics are great i'm gonna be completely honest with y'all the graphics yep. of this game is it, it, it's not extremely cartoonish but it is not it is not extremely real the graphics are amazing they play well with the game uh, the whole scenery of what the game is plays very well with it i think the they did well with the way the characters actually move i think they did well with how the characters interact the emotes flow really well in the characters and the way the characters use their abilities is perfect the graphics are extremely perfect on this game hi res you did an amazing 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 work on the graphics on this game so if you ever see this video ever um yeah hi res you did really good so hey, i applaud you on that so thank you very much appreciate it what you got on your graphics what do you think yeah, so uh, I'm a huge graphics fiend. I really am. I have a powerhouse of a computer, and so I just love pushing it to the max. And I think as a shooter, oh, outstanding graphics. For a shooter, outstanding graphics. Um, and you got to really think, too. I mean, we play this on PC, so obviously we're going to get the max potential. Or I played on PC. He plays it on console. So I'm yeah. going to get like the max potential, all the extra settings, everything that they put to cater to pc gaming but as you can see they have it on playstation xbox nintendo switch and pc so i mean obviously i'm sure on nintendo the graphics don't look as good as they do whenever i'm playing it but no I, i'm a huge fan of it uh i wish there was more uh ray tracing involved because there's a lot of reflections and a lot of crazy stuff going on I think that there's a lot of extra stuff that they could add, like ambient lighting and uh, fires staying longer and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'd probably rate it a four out of five. I think they the art style is amazing. They really do a great job with all that. I think that they do have potential to keep going. So I'm not gonna top them out with a five straight out the gate, but I'll give them a four out of five for sure. Um, Looks like he's talking to someone. We'll go ahead and go on to playability and replay super super smooth game extremely like you can hop in on a match the only thing right now is like the queue times are a little bit rough depending on what server um you're playing on there's some connectivity issues here and there nothing major um i've never really had a problem um but whenever i played with a group of people you have an occasional person who lags out here and there and so yeah, on playability and uh, and replay, talking about the other half coming back, like 
are you going to be able to have the longevity to keep playing this game? And the answer is yes. I have, myself have put in well over 100 hours. I'd have to check to make sure, but I got called out the other day. I think it was like a few weeks ago on like I had almost 200 hours played on the game. Um, so yeah, <laughs> replay. And I'm usually not a, uh, a person who like comes back to a game unless they like I really love the game. And yeah, no, Rogue Company is definitely one of them that I've played for over a year now and I have not lost interest. I love playing about it, talking about it, seeing it, looking more at it makes me want to come back to it. And High Res does an amazing an amazing job of keep to keep bringing you back. I mean, they they'll release new operators, but nothing that's ah, I was about I was about to say something. Let me stop myself. I was going to say they'll they won't release operators that are too OP. But if I go in and cycle through, if you can see on my little miniature screen here, let's see if we can't find her. There's one operator that's debatably OP, and I can definitely see why. If you have a really good player with her, yeah, no, you're definitely going to have to team up on her. She's pretty dirty. Do they not have her on here? Oh my goodness, they haven't updated their website. That's crazy. Look at me calling, calling out high res. Um, let's Juke from Moreau Company. There she is. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Here, I'll just bring this up. But yeah, this is uh this is Juke. Um crazy. She's pretty she's pretty OP right now. Um I think the best counter for her is glitch. And like I said just in and there she's op and i already told you a counter for her like so take that with what you will it's very well balanced game there's some operators that are debatably more op than others when it comes to really good players at the game if you're not a very good player uh or i'm sorry if you're just a casual gamer or if you're like falling that that happy medium to where you're not crazy ranked all the time or anything like that but uh you're also not like dog shit then you could definitely run juke but someone like me is gonna pop in there and just drop you with a shot with a sniper to the head so i mean like i said it's very it's very balanced especially like the skill levels i feel like are very balanced because you can catch like one sweaty character myself <laughs> Um, can definitely change the game. Because, uh, I mean, I can carry a whole four team on certain game modes. That's what's also nice and good, because you can have the most OP rogue in the game, and if you're not good at the game and you're playing a game like Team Deathmatch, you're going to be feeding. Feeding means you are literally giving the enemy team points, and then me, a good person has to try to counter that by getting more kills. So that really I'm racing this team to get more kills because they're out here killing my guy. Um, so yeah, I think the replayability or coming back and drawing you back is really good. Their battle passes have been amazing. Um, some things kind of irritate me. You can kind of tell high res kind of uh, plays favorites or maybe forgets about some of their rogues when it comes to the customization when it comes to nerfing and balancing the game they do not that they have a good priority list and that's a one of the more bottom of the list like i said one of my mains is mac and they he's been around for a, quite a while and they just haven't gave him the best customizations they finally put him in a battle pass and they gave him a poopy skin and i'm just like you're kidding me but they made up for it because they gave him a mythic it goes so in rarity for their custom content I think it goes like uncommon green to rare to epic yeah there you go rare epic to legendary and then mythic skins man they gave them a mean mythic skin and super happy about that um i don't really want to continue on until i hear his personal opinion on the replay and the playability so i'm gonna real quick keep us sidetracked and entertained let's go over and I'm gonna just Ooh, sorry. I apologize. Talking too much and me yawning. My brain's telling me slow down. Let's go ahead and like meet the rogues. I'm gonna go through all the rogues with you guys. 
and tell you kind of what they are and what they do. We got Anvil. Anvil is a defender rogue, so they're all labeled into, I think, four different gr uh, groups. At the top of my head, it's Duelist, um, Breacher, Support, and Defender. Look at me go. So, Anvil is a defender. His active ability is, or his ultimate, whatever you want to call it, is to drop a shield and he can charge it again and break the windshield. And so it's a full cover that you can you can break the windshield with just a click of a button. Um, and then it breaks the windshield, turning to a half cover, but you can shoot out of it. It's not completely indestructible, but it might as well be because it's pretty tanky. Um, a counter against Anvil is easily Switchblade. Switchblade just shoots an RPG, whatever she shoots that, like a cover, for example, it's going to spread an AOE, area of effect, uh, fire under it or against it. And so obviously you're fucking with that dude's cover right then and there. But uh, Anvil has a pretty dirty um, LMG right from the gate. Hmm. Yawning again. Anvil is a pretty dirty LMG. The MLX Law, I think it's called. And it has the highest fire rate um, out of the two MLG or LMGs that are in the game. That's right. There's only two light machine guns and they are completely different. And both of them are OP in their own ways. I love LMGs. Love them. Um, and then, yeah, also Anvil, as you can see, is a bulky dude with a big old bulletproof vest and high res completely. Um, edit his perks. That's right. There's perks to the game, so you can buy it all like you're playing Valorant or CSGO or whatever. Um, League of Legends, Smite, whatever. Any of those games, how you buy each round, it's kind of the same here. And they have perks and they all have their own customizable perks with their own rarity level. The higher rarity meaning that perk will increase the percentages or the effects that you get from buying it. So for example, this dude has a legendary uh, armor vest, bulletproof vest. And because he has legendary, it gives him 75 additional armor. So already 100 health plus 75 armor. Super nice. Um, moving on. And I apologize for uh, yawning so much. Oh, I can't remember. Man, what's Anvil's passive? I don't remember Anvil's passive. I apologize. Yeah, I, man. Yeah, I don't remember Anvil's passive. My apologies. But yeah, that's the, that's the main stuff. Wait. Nope, I don't remember. <laughs> Chalk. I personally don't play with chalk. Um, I see him. He has an SMG or a shotgun. Chalk. Like I said, today I don't ever play with him. I haven't really played with him. And I don't really know too much about him. But what I do know is he has an ability to where whenever he's downed, he can roll. And he can also revive himself. And then, or whenever he's alive, he can add that and surplus his health. I like, I almost double, I'd say, from what I have seen. But yeah, I haven't played with him, so he seems like a highly mobile, like sprint to an area, kill a person, take cover. Sprint to an area, take cover. Okay, this situation calls for more health. Okay, I took on this one guy. My team's here to back me up. I'm going to roll back. And I'm going to heal myself and get right back into the battle or, or right back into the fight. That's kind of Chalk's uh, playing. And then you got Cannon, the Beef Castle. Man. Yawning left and right. But no, I remember when he first came out. Oh, my gosh. I did a first impression uh, stream with him. I called this dude the Ace Master. This dude could wipe a team by himself every single round of demolition. He is so dirty. If you get a good cannon, you should just run for your life. Literally, the best strategy to counter cannon when he whips out his big old minigun is run. You hear him? Run. He's slow, so just run away. Wait till it's over. Like, he is a dirty... Or wait till he's distracted with somebody else and hit nothing but headshots. Hit nothing but headshots and you can beat a good cannon. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Try to hit him from behind or wait till he's distracted or run. Maybe if you're glitch again, glitch can counter any active ability. So since he has an OP active ability, glitch 
He literally, his ability is to hack everybody and then for he disables everyone's active. So if this dude just whipped out his and starts shooting and then glitch cancels it, breaks his active ability, now he has to wait for his entire thing to recharge after he's able to use it again, after glitch's effect wears off. So glitch is a great counter. He's a great counter person. Um, Cannon uses shotguns and uh, assault rifles. His assault rifle coming out the gate is the Sahara. Oh my god. The come up on the Sahara. Beautiful. Beautiful. The Sahara was an assault rifle that sucked. That was terrible. No one used it because its fire rate wasn't that good and you just couldn't hit nothing. The bullet spread was way too crazy. Um, its fall off range was insane. It was literally the poopiest gun out of all the assault rifles. It was bad. It was really bad. They buffed the hell out of this gun insanely. The Sahara now is a crazy good gun, still has a little bit of bullet spread. And what they did to it, I want them to do to more guns. If you upgrade this gun to Epic, it doesn't take any debuffs. You up, But if you're on a long range map, you upgrade it to Legendary and then it suppresses, but it's a scope on it. So now you can shoot farther. It's suppressed, but it counters it. You can't get it without a cost. It slowers your fire rate by, I think, like 0.2. So I love what they did with that gun. and I would love to see them do it more. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. It's no, you're good. I kept them distracted by trying to go yeah. through the operators. <laughs> and I already did my I did my rating on the uh, playability and replay. I told okay. them about the graphics. Basically, what I said to the graphics to recap you is I don't want to put them at five because I think there's room for growth for them. So I put them at a four. I feel like they can make fire a more ambient thing, uh, better lighting maybe in certain uh, situations and better reflections, like more ray tracing. But like I said, I think uh, there's little things I think they can do that uh, has room for growth. So I didn't want to max them out with a five out of five right out the gate. But I love their graphics. Our style is beautiful. And... No, I, yeah, no, I, I love a lot about it. They're literally everything. Taunts are amazing. The voice acting is really good. I mean, I know that doesn't play into the graphics, but uh, they're, uh, what do we do all the time? They're gestures. Oh my God, yes. They're, they're emotes. Yeah. They're emotes. Thank you. Oh my God, amazing. Yes. Really well done. Yes, I think, uh, um, you know what? You saying that, I agree. I agree 100%. I think there's definitely room for tons of growth. I will definitely give it four hourglasses on on graphics as well. Um, it's just not not because we're just trying to uh, be dicks about it and not give it a five because it could easily be a five. But at the same time, yeah. it's a matter of letting the company know, hey, you know what? There's actually room for, for growth, and why not push you guys to go even further? You know? Yeah, exactly. No, 100%. exactly. Uh, it's players. definitely a game you're gonna hop into and you're not gonna have like any complaints it's Absolutely. more so uh, it's more so if be like hey this is like a tip you know you could do this yeah. and it would be even better yeah like right Wait. now right now it's not gonna stop me from playing it that's a that's a fact yeah <laughs> yeah I, de I describe it as ice cream yeah. i'm not gonna stop eating ice cream <laughs> but chocolate syrup on this hoe would be a little bit better you know <laughs> 100%. i love the analogy a hundred percent um, I think for playability, um, the way I see it, 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 it is, this game is so fucking playable. It, it really is. Because the reality is, is that yes, there is a little bit of a learning curve with the game. Like a very small, I wouldn't say huge. I think it's a very small. Once you actually find that operator that you're very comfortable with and you think you're fluent with it, I think that's when, that that is when you figure out, holy shit. This is what I want to do. This is what I can do with this operator, right? For example, Ronan, she can throw her, her little dagger. Her dagger actually has a scent text connected to it. And once you throw it, you can do different things with that dagger. You either let it there and it activates by itself. And anybody that passes on it, boom, it hit, it, it'll hit it. Um, or you can dive. throw it at a person. Or you can throw it directly blows at up. a person. Or yep, you can throw right it, your feet. aim at it, and when the person is like shooting you from a distance, but you know your radius on that on that dagger is is there, you can actually just shoot the mine and actually kill them from a distance. Well, so I see what I'm saying. The playability on the game it all depends on how you want to play the game. Um, I think it's great, and the re the replayability of the game in reality lies in 
wanting to master the game that is where yeah. the replay of this comes in there's not really a um a campaign to the game so we're not gonna we're not gonna talk on that because there's not really a campaign but the replayability is definitely on wanting to master the game and really kick it up a notch when you're playing against other other players um it, it, it really gives you that 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 sense of like well this is what we're gonna do here uh and yeah. i'm going in there and i'm going to destroy motherfuckers that's that's that is the the end all of the game um that being said when it comes to the playability and the replayability i'm also going to give it a four not because it's it's bad i just i just think um i just think if you added a campaign i wouldn't say a campaign i wouldn't say a campaign i i Ah, there's definitely a lot of places they can take it i would give it a four out of five too and to recap on some of the stuff i said um i think they're doing great stuff with adding new ops and stuff like that and great on the battle passes but what it feels like is high res has a priority list and that's great it's definitely gameplay and balancing the game first and then it's custom uh, content afterwards and so it feels like they play favorites too with some of the operators and some operators are kind of left out so finally my main mac like he was in the last battle pass and he got a really stupid outfit that i already have a better outfit for him and i've done had a better outfit so like i said it's give and take with some of that and they definitely have plenty of room for growth they their lack of incentive on mastering a specific rogue so you can master a rogue and then i think at rogue mastery level three you get a badass personal emote for that rogue and then you get to like mastery level seven nothing mastery level eight nine nothing 10 you finally get like a calling card for them or like a title yes. from them so it's like and it slows down too it's like what the what the hell am i doing here what's the incentive yep. it's just literally to say hey i've mastered this person pretty yep. much it's I, I think they should i think they should definitely give you an incentive to wanting to fully master a character and like just really give it that 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 off right so it's like one of those things where you're like well you know i'm gonna get a badass skin or i'm gonna get a skin for my gun or another even another emo something something put something there that will let me progress through and not stop me from going to mastery um what is it 10 to mastery 10, yeah, 10 right don't 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 just pause it there because now if i get to level when i get to mastery seven i'm just gonna hop on another operator and fucking keep going and that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did yep. with Mac. That's you, you, awesome. you're dedicated. I appreciate, I appreciate yeah. your passion. I bow down to your dedication. Yeah. This man's still maining cannon, trying to get him to ten. I think I got to mastery level seven or eight with Mac, and then I saw there was an award for mastering multiple rogues, and I've been doing that ever since. And I have like ten or eleven different rogues mastered, and yeah. so I have a, a few of them here and there that are level three, level two, level one five whatever and this man's out here like i'm this close i'm almost I'm got so 10 close. i'm so close right <laughs> after this podcast you better best believe i'm gonna go and finish oh you're gonna off. get it yeah i'm gonna finish it off <laughs> but i'm telling you right now it, it's it, it, it the not having the incentive definitely slows everything down and that that's because of that i'm definitely gonna give it a four out of five on the playability of, yeah. of the actual yeah. game and replayability of it uh, because it just it just definitely slows down the progress. I agree with Gucci on that. It, it definitely slows down your your wanting to finish that character. That's all. It yeah. Is. I want more mature audiences to play this game because you brought up learning curve and oh. it's amazing. This is not like Call of Duty. All right, so you can we we get people like kids hop in on Nintendo Switch and stuff all the time, and it's annoying to play with them because they hop in this game and you can't just hop in straight away, grab a gun, an operator, and start shooting and killing. Maybe if you're a shroud out here with crazy accuracy, you can make up for it. <laughs> yeah. But this game, let me give you a perfect example, all right? Cannon, let's say you grab cannon, you don't know when to use his minigun, you get dropped because there's a quick half a second to pull out the minigun until you learn little tricks here and there. But also, there's a bunch of perks too. So you have cannon out here, right? And then you grab your minigun and then boom, out of nowhere, glitch just destroys your minigun. Awesome. Well, if you would have knew what glitch's ability was, then you would have took him out, then brought out your cannon. Exactly. You know, there would have been strategy into it. And then this man cannon too, he could be OP too. He has a he does the the pistol 
uh, method where you literally you grab your pistol only. That way you can grab a legendary perk and then grab your main weapon after. Mm -hmm. So this man's got life train. So now he kills someone and he gets 60 health back. It doesn't matter if he's at Delicious. 30 health. Now he's at 90, just like that. Kills two people. His health is like, it just keeps coming back to him. It creates a good c character and a good player to be a great player and a great character just yeah. by reading on, more about on. it. Fucking preach on. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. A hundred percent. This this is definitely not COD, and I've seen it so many times where people just go in there and then just start running. Where oh, are, yeah. You, you where are, are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> where are you going? Why, Why are, are you running? running? <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you doing that to me right now, man? That being said, though, the smoothness in this game, I'm, I have to talk about the smoothness, right? We, we have to enter into that topic. The smoothness of this game is incredible. It is extremely smooth. The way they mantle, the way that they hide, the way that you can actually crouch on their, on their stuff. Um, of course, let's not let's not take away from certain, uh, certain things in the map where you can actually break, right? Like windows and stuff like that. Um, the, the game itself is extremely smooth. The movement is smooth. The way you can swap shoulders is extremely smooth from one side to the other. The, the game is well done in that aspect. When it comes to smoothness, no shadow of a doubt, I think it's perfect the way it is right now. I don't think there's any more work that you need to do with the smoothness of this game. It works well. It is perfect. Even when you're evading from shots, I think it's perfect. I'm definitely going to give it a 5, and that's just my opinion on it. Um, the smoothness is good. Please, high res. Don't change the smoothness of the game. It, it's perfect. There's... It, yeah, no, it definitely really <laughs> flows into each other it's back totally to back. It, it's, it's really good. I don't know if this would really go into the smoothness category or the gameplay category, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyways. Um, it's little... Since it is third person, and I don't know if there's much you can do to combat this, but it's just a little, if you play like ranked and really good, like sweaty people, you'll notice people like will do a third person peek and to where they'll be able to get it, especially with a sniper or a DMR, they'll be able to shoot and they won't really be able to reveal their own weapon or anything. Like you might be able to see their, their, uh, their head, we call it head glitching or whatever you want to call it, but they'll real quick dip in, dip out, get those shots off, and they'll smack you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that would go into the smoothness, but I'd love to see that get combated somehow. I don't really know how, but yeah, no, yeah. I definitely would. I think other I think, than that, oh, you're it's talking like, about the 90 degree angle kind of deal, like where they're they're behind a, a wall or something, but you don't see and them, they can but they shoot. see you. That's like one of those things. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. I don't mind a third person peeking. No, it's more so. Have you ever been like a uh, wall, like uh, like like I said, it's like head peeking or uh, how else would I call it? They're behind cover. You can't see their whole body, but they can shoot outside that cover. So they're right up against the wall, mm. right in their crosshair. Mm -hmm. Here's the wall. Their crosshair is right to the like. Yep. Yeah. I little bit the past there. Yeah. 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 And they smack <laughs> kids. And like it's like that. you can't shoot sorry. that person. Like sorry, you gotta draw gotta him go. out. I gotta, I, I do that. I, I mean, the mechanic is there. So if you don't do it, you're stupid regardless. But yes, yeah, I no, no, I it is there. Gotta be, there's, there, there's gotta be a way to combat that. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think, Throwing I think that's definitely on the rotating. gameplay. That's definitely on the, on, on the gameplay kind of deal, 100%. Because the game runs smooth regardless of that. But definitely on gameplay aspect, yeah, they, they need to find a way to combat that entirely. Um, For sure, for sure. Uh, when it comes to the story, like I said, this is not a story game, but every operator does have their own back uh, backstory. Oh yeah, and back backstory lore galore. Yes, fun. And if you actually do read what the operators are coming from and all that good stuff, like for example, Cannon, he's a jackal, right? A jackal is a group, and um, he his backstory is the backstory of every operator actually in this game is very in depth very yeah. in-depth like if you're not the person to read then this might not be the category that you might just be like well this is not a story game but well yeah you no know and yes no because it's not really developing a story for your operators yes if you're the person that's actually loves to read right so those people yeah. that play like for example elden ring elden ring in reality doesn't have a story unless you actually dig in into the lore that's the facts of it it drops you in there congratulations good luck 
yep. that's, that's pretty much yep. it. That is no, I, the Elden Ring. I actually remember most of Cannon's backstory, and basically the man wanted to be a minigun door chopper um, or door gunner in a helicopter, and he was too big to do that. So instead, he joined up with the uh, the Rangers, and so that was a little bit of his backstory that I remember. Yeah, and um, and he wields a minigun perfectly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that man, man. Love it. It takes me out of a lot of sticky situations, <laughs> and it, it helps me ace too. So yeah, it's, it's just saying. That's what I told him. I told him too when Cannon first came out. I played him all the time. And I literally called him the ace master. He's probably like one of the only people that can just go in there and repetitively dominate and ace the whole team on demolition over and over again. A hundred percent. He's I, very, very dirty. Yeah. So story wise, I'm going to be fair since it's not really a story game itself and whatnot. We yeah. do have to be fair regardless. There is lore behind these operators. So I'm going to give it a three out of five. Due to the fact that it's not a story game, but there is lore behind these uh, these operators. Yeah, whenever they introduce the operators and stuff, they like coming out with little videos and yeah. stuff like that. I think for the first time on the last update, you got to do certain quests and you to reveal more lore about the upcoming operator, Juke. And so, yeah, that was a, a first. I like that they're kind of trying to do stuff to introduce more lore yep. and more story behind it. And personalization, I'd probably put the personalization in with the uh story a little bit along with the lore so okay. like for for example i don't know uh anvil he'll have like customization themed to, to what he wants you know he believes the biggest gun and the biggest armor is going to be able to win the fight that's literally in his background and so they'll give him big boys stuff like that like you're not going to see this customization where you can turn this dude into a frail girl yeah exactly. you know what i mean it kind of goes with its theme they all have a theme so that's cool but yeah no i'd rate it a three out of five as well yeah like for example runway right so you got this skin from runway where she is all blonde and extremely young right and people are like oh man that skin is fire i don't know about extremely young maybe upper 30s well, definitely, yeah, but, but definitely younger, helps with the age a little bit she is she's that's yeah, for sure. She definitely is. looks like a librarian, a little bit of an yeah, older librarian. And, and, and I'm pretty sure the moment that came out, everybody was like, yo, that skin is fire. It's crazy. It's good. Well, if you know a little bit of her backstory, that's how she started. Yeah. So, uh, for those who probably missed Runway when she came out and whatnot, even her launch um, cinematic actually shows her young. That's how she started that's who she was so the, her that skin is from the past of her life so i so the, the there is story like i said it's just not developed like how maybe us gamers that enjoy kind of story in a certain games in certain games mm -hmm. would would care for right we, we would definitely love to see a little bit more of it but i get it it's it's not based on story so it's understandable but i definitely give it a three out of five uh i think it's in between that's yeah. that's that's my final i feel like there's a definitely that. enough there to where they could maybe make a cartoon oh 100 so. i i would love a cg like actual epi like episodes of the shit oh yeah that hybrids hybrids would break the mold on that like yeah what i would definitely see it 100 percent. i would not miss an episode that's bad <laughs> For real. We said it first. Copyright. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you make it, yeah, it's royalties. Fuck it. <laughs> Put us part of the team. We'll make, I'll create the story. 100%. Oh my God, I'll sit down, dude. You and me will fucking create us. Such a good story on this. Oh. Oh my Lord. I would love to. Oh, get, me out, get me out of work and I'll spend, I'll spend my 60 hours yeah, weekly fine. on this. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can write text. You know what I'm saying? I got <laughs> I can write fast. Um, control wise, I think it is by far the most basic but best controls I've actually played in any type of shooter. I'm gonna be completely honest. Besides Call of Duty, right? Call of Duty is like, I mean, it's it's ain't shoot run. I, I mean, can't get any more basic than that to be honest. But when it comes to these type of games, I mean, man, I've seen I've seen games where controllers are like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> But this yeah. is good. The controls on this game are good. Don't change them. Whatever you do, 
they are perfect the way they are i'm definitely gonna give it like this is not even a big topic to really talk about the controllers are just fucking good and i i, I don't care what you say they're, they're fucking good period i'm gonna give it a fucking five out of that shit that, that shit is good i got i got one tiny little uh, thing hey his <laughs> shit don't matter solid <laughs> solid I got one tiny little thing. One tiny little thing. <laughs> one thing that's a little bit weird for me, and for a long time, I didn't even know you could do it because it's such a weird control, is, and I'm sure I could just easily key bind it to make it feel better. On Call of Duty, how do you hit somebody? Right stick down. Right stick down. It's a knife. On this, it's right D-pad for some reason. Oh, that is I literally my, my only little thing. Because, like, it would definitely be hard on controller to, like, move or or you can't really do both and hit the right d-pad so that one would be a little bit funky i'm sure i could easily swap it over to hitting the right yeah, stick I guess, down i guess i probably should honestly yeah i mean i guess i don't <laughs> really bitch about it There's you don't ever do it i don't really do it man I... <laughs> yeah the only time i ever do it is if you don't have a melee weapon and you need to destroy trench's little bob wire that's the only time I ever use the right D-pad. Which, by the if way, you, you can punch his stuff. I don't see why I can't just fucking destroy it while, while shooting it. I don't understand. With a weapon? That. Yeah. That, that I do not understand. I I, I hope sometimes. I think it would be... I, but if you think about it, if you can just destroy it while shooting it, then... He would be useless. It would kind of... Yeah, he, he would, would be really be useless. Yeah. I, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. But you can destroy it with fucking grenades and whatnot. So I guess there, there yeah. there's a way to combat that shit. Yeah. Yeah, but if you really don't know how to melee in the game, like, for the first time, I didn't know how to melee. I actually found myself, when I started playing it again, I found myself, like, trying to defuse the bomb. I'm like, oh, how I do I that. melee? <laughs> I was screaming, I was like, how do I melee? I don't know how to punch it. He's like, right there, man, it's all Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I remember, too, I was trying to defuse the bomb one time. And I and I, I think I said destroy the bob wire, oh, that's and you're kind of you're kind of just like shooting at it or looking at it. I don't remember. That's and I was like, <laughs> and I was just like, bro. He's like, I don't know how to destroy it. I'm like, right D pad. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know, man. I'm sorry. That was crazy. Uh, content wise, um, I think content is very diverse in the game. I, I I'm happy that high res created a game that is not a pay to win kind of situation it is literally all customization i love it i think the content in the game is good i know that they're releasing more ops as as time goes high res has never been a company to actually forget their games itself until they're creating another type of game right there's no there's no shadow of a doubt that sometime in the future we'll definitely see some rogue company too or something like that um because you know that they, they're not gonna exhaust but then again no smite it just released out, yeah yeah 100 100 <laughs> you know i'm pretty sure in the future but they're gonna be releasing more ops i know that for a fact and i'm pretty sure there's a roadmap somewhere out there um actually let me see if i can find a, a roadmap for you guys i'm pretty sure there's a roadmap. um and the best part of it is I, everything is what map? it's a, a roadmap you found it the maps is that what you're talking no, about no 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 roadmap is like the life oh the life roadmap the yeah, yeah like what they plan on doing yeah. in the future their timeline um yeah you go roadmap 2021 weekly right? up, updates so, here's a here, so i guess it was on there's a preview reddit. One. i think it was they, on reddit last time they showed uh that was the showcase but i don't want i don't want the showcase i just want the picture of the roadmap uh, um I just checked their weekly updates and uh, guess what's on there? What's up? Summer series tournament format and signups. No way. Yep. Yeah, we got we, hey, we I got to look at that afterward. Play with the devs event. Like they do stuff like they do weekly updates. They do a weekly update list and a big Operation Daybreak hot fixes notes. So like let me just open this up. Fix a crash, hello rogues. Go on their tournament. Oh. See what's going on with that tournament format signups an outline of original announcement for rogue company championship series the summer phase will last for six weeks and will cultivate in another land event hosted live at our esports studio in atlanta oh, georgia so they are converting it to esports fuck yes yeah that'll be and, oh and it, it did not shock me at all that did not shock me at all this game is definitely 
esports material. A hundred fucking percent. Yeah, six weeks of online play. Double okay, elimination I see, I bracket your, each week. I see Best of three. Okay. So you got yeah. play with the devs event. So the, this is the roadmap. This is the roadmap. So operation yeah, debris, much. update notes. You got your PTS dev talks, introducing supply drops, which that already happened. Uh, let me Love go them. all the way to, yes, yes. And, and this is the reason why, guys. I know, I know that in the past, I've actually talked about this. Um... And, and like I ranted it on my personal stream and whatnot. And I always said, yo, supply drops and suck my dick. Like our booty. <laughs> that, fuck <laughs> that, dude. Fuck but that. they made booty into booty full. Exactly. They really did. Exactly. I think, I think high res was extremely smart with it. And here's the reason why. Yes, you can buy, you know, their supply drops, but they've had this formula since smite this is nothing new gents right smite it's that's the best part it's not even a, play, a, a pay to win item, right so high res has always been this 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 company that develops these type of games um it's the same formula the transition to paladins right so the formula for their supply drops is you can get supply drops but you can also earn supply drops and it's just only customizable like it's just cosmetics yeah so, and my favorite thing I too though doesn't is, bother me at all <laughs> is you can get you can get rogues you can get you could save a yeah. lot of money through the supply drops and what they do um a lot of the times that's kind of like um a personal issue with me um some of my favorite things so like for example to do one battle pass and then in the store you can go ahead and buy these cool like outfits or cool emotes and then they're gone basically like forever and now with the supply drops, you have a chance of actually getting them. them you cannot get them in the store, but you have a chance of getting these pass emotes. And I'm just like, yes, finally, I don't have to wait every day or every week to see the refresh of content to see if I can actually get what I wanted. So that's really okay. nice. So, okay, it's so they're really news. not that much. They're news. I don't know. Like in game currency, you can buy with in game currency, and it's really not that much. I think it's 12,000 rep. You can get it, you can get one like maybe one to two a week, depends on how much you grind. So, this is not the roadmap, Bob. My bad. I guess this you No, know, right it's here, just weekly updates. Yeah, just a weekly update. Um, yeah, I don't know if they I'm really have. I'm to find the roadmap because the roadmap the best, is definitely. I don't know if they have a roadmap. The best thing that you could probably look at is their full release update notes because they kind of talk about where they're going to take it because they kind of want to keep a lot of it hidden is what i got from it so rogue company full release here we go leaving beta full release um uh notes here you go so rogue company and when they first came out, only had 16 rogues, 19 weapons, 13 maps, and six game modes. Now they have 25 rogues, 28 maps, or 28 weapons, 20 maps, 18 game modes, rogue mastery, weapon mastery, narrative events, login rewards, contract yeah. ranked, battle passes, MVP screens. Yeah, their content, their content is ridiculous. I'm sorry, but I mean, the reason go. This why is... I love high res. It's because the way high res does content is like hot content. It's not it's not like, hey, here's some content for you guys. You guys yeah, here's, shut here's, the fuck up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, pretty much. Like, like they toss you a bone every once in a while. No, these guys no, are like, all right, we're like rehauling the whole game pretty much. And they do it in a really good way. Like I have never seen this is probably one of the best ranked modes I've seen in any game ever. Their ranked modes are very good. Like probably like my second best favorite how ranked works in any other game is probably uh, Rainbow Six Siege. And that game's been out for so many years. And I think Rogue might have actually the formula to suppress yes. them in their ranked. It's super nice how they did everything. Oh, I love their rank th this with the full release. But here you go. This is where they kind of talk about what's gonna go on. We're excited to announce that we've reached the end of our uh, beta will enter our full release within our next update. This will briefly update a feature with a new rogue. Um, that's Juke. A new season and some sweet new features that you'll hear more about in our update show. Oh, they have an update show. Oh, 
probably on, on their YouTube or something, I'm assuming. Um, there's much more to come this year, including a fantastic crossover that we can't wait to tell you about just yet. So there's some fantastic crossover coming. They don't want to tell us yet, but also expect us to change how we approach updates to Rogue Company, focusing less on major new features and more on adding strong content, continually yes, improving you. quality and addressing key community concerns. Look, and content speaking of hot. community, it's yeah. content, man. That's what I love high res. Look, high res don't shy on giving you something that at sometimes you don't want, but you're so happy and okay with it. That's the thing, right? Let's take, I'm gonna take you guys like the best example ever. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know Slipknot and a lot of people know Slipknot, right? There's people that love that hardcore fucking music. Some people don't like that shit. But guess what? Having characters like, like the way the way Slipknot dresses, they incorporated and they partnered up with Slipknot to create skins for fucking Smite, and those skins are fucking bomb. Those are beautiful skins. And let me tell you something: though. if that is the case, and now we have a full release on Rogue, bro. We already have Rambo. Yeah, yep. You have we have Doctor Disrespect and Rambo. Doctor Disrespect and Rambo, of. right? They have a whole map that is to just, fucking Doctor Disrespect. Bro, that is just loads like 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 that's the low of the totem pole right now, and they look amazing. Imagine yeah, really what do. the future's gonna look like for these type these type of skins, bro. Yeah, you know they have some insanely good skins. Some like, insanely good ones. Like, like I wouldn't look. I'm gonna be honest, bro. How badass would it be if they actually use Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator and t give it to fucking Cannon? I don't even care if Cannon goes. It, it, I don't. It, it's gonna go from black to white. But let me tell you something. That shit's gonna be OP. That looks. It's gonna look great. Because yeah, guess who uses good. a minigun in Predator? Fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think they do have a predator type skin for Saint. Do they? Not. I'm pretty sure. I mean, like I can't wait for them to start incorporating these type of skins into Rogue. And the best part is that High Res, they make sense of their skins. That is what I like about their content is that they make sense of what they put down content for right um like for example everybody knows in smite who um uh i think Ka kamahara i think it's what his name is I all i know he he always like has like a little hammer kind of deal when i gets drunk and whatnot guess what one of his skins is bob or not bob uh what's the, what's the guy that paints what's his name the guy that paints that he always has an afro he's yeah, I know, I know you're talking He's about. I thought, I, thought it, I thought it was Bob Wilson. No, not Bob Wilson. Man, now you're making me space. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know who. He, I, I don't remember the name. I know who the artist is. But guess what? That's the skin. <laughs> it's hilarious. It makes sense because that dude always carries a heavy, a heavy thing just exactly who like. Am I thinking of? See what I'm saying? Nope, that's not him. So, like the content, the content in the game, as of now. As of now, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and safely say, as of now, I'm gonna go ahead and say and safely say, and I'm gonna be completely honest with it. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. As of now, that will change in the future. That 100% will change in the future as it goes out. Right? It, the game just launched maybe a couple like two weeks ago. So, as of now, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. But in a couple of months, I'm 100% sure that that rating will change to 4. A year from now, it is going to definitely be a 5. Because it's just hot content, man. The amounts of skin that Smite and Paladin alone have that make sense is insane. The best part is that their content not only does it make fucking sense, it's, it's something you definitely want to buy. That's, that is... That's what high res is just smart. I'm sorry, but they're just smart with their. 
And the fact yeah. that you can make a person go, yeah, I'm going to get that. So then you know it's good. It's good, right? It's not like Call of Duty where you get all these mountains of skin. So many skins. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. There you go. Bob Rocker. Ross. He, we almost I was going to drive me one. insane. Don't ever come <laughs> at me again when I can't remember something. Because I get like this, like I'm just like, what is it? Forget, what is it? Forget the podcast. Forget what <laughs> we're talking about. I, I can't move on until I find out who this is. Damn it. So, so it's just, I think, I think right now, like I said, it's a three to me. Um, it will definitely yeah. be a four in a year from now. A hundred percent will be five. The content is too hot. High res is really good at doing content when it comes to skins. Um, like the now they're adding weapon skins. So, you know, fuck. Dude. I think. <laughs> I think just because of the rate that they're putting in content right now, I'm really happy with it. So I'm going to give it a four. So like, as I'm constantly like, oh yeah, give me more, give me more, give me more. But they're giving me plenty at a good pace. And I already have enough content to where I'm happy. And there's more content for me to grind for. So, so I'm in this state to where I don't have everything. And I'm like, that's cool. But I'm also in this state to where okay i'm happy with what i have but i would love to see more and different variations for maybe this operator or this or this or this or more mythic skins more animated reactive skins that they've been popping out because right now to my knowledge we have two and one was just released yep. for the um uh the assault rifle the, the m4 looking one i forget okay. the name but okay. so yeah I, I gave it a solid four mostly because of like i said the pace that they've been pushing out okay okay like i said i, I i'm gonna keep mine at three I agree with you. I definitely agree with you 100%. And hey, gents, don't get it twisted. The reason why we're agreeing so well with this game is because the game is well made. Fucking period. Yeah, that's Fucking really period. good. Because there is definitely going to be games where we're going to be discussing, and I'm pretty sure Gucci's going to be like, nope, I think this game is this and this and this. And I'm going to say, no, you're wrong. And there's going to be games where I'm going to be like, yeah, this game is this and this and this. And Gucci's be like, you're absolutely fucking wrong. And this is why. Uh, this is the beauty of it. That's why I enjoy doing this this um, duo. And sometimes maybe it'll be a quad or it'll be a trio on, on the podcast. Uh, but me and huh. Gucci will be typically the... The, um, the, ma- the main duo. The yep. back-to-back. The back two-man back. army up in this shizzle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're definitely going to be on it. Um but the game is just well made, period. Overall, I think it's safe to say that averagely, this game is definitely a four out of five. Um, so it is a must get if you're the type of person that enjoys a good team based combat, um, good team tactical based combat games. Um, this game is great. Uh, man, I would say have buddies, test it yourself out first. You're definitely going to have a little bit of headache um, because it is a learning curve. Like I said, not a huge one, but there is a small learning curve with it. And once you start learning it and you start mastering certain things, um, you're going to get extremely irritated with a lot of new players that you're going to meet or players that are coming into the game now because they're trying to test something new and they are going to extremely suck at it. And you're going to ask why in the hell are these people not pushing or why is it that I'm always getting caught? by surprise with two people because you're going to have players that will play together that is what we enjoy doing we like me and him will go in and honestly him and me it's actually such an army yeah it's kind of a good team where we can actually bring down full teams him and me Uh, we've done it many times before yeah yeah. i've literally been on a phone call with my wife not even talking to this man and our chemistry is so good we literally it was just me and him in the game and we wiped all this whole team of four they made they were fucking us up so bad that our other two randos left and it was just me and him and i was muted talking to my wife and we still wrecked them all got an ace and we got the dub we got the dub we definitely got the dub so but once you start learning the game you're definitely gonna invite your friends over yeah you're gonna explain the game to them they're gonna fucking enjoy it and we are gonna be on point uh the game is extremely well made so hi res congratulations on making such an amazing game honestly uh with the back to back and to back because paladins is an amazing game and honestly smite is a great mode awesome. yeah great mode 
doesn't climb to league, of course. Um, but this is because the league has been there and it, there's more to league than what it is. Uh, Smite yeah. is actually extremely simple, but very awesome to play. So, High Res is an amazing company to follow, of course, and I wouldn't expect anything less from High Res to be. So, great job, High. Great job, yeah. High Great job. Yes. It is an amazing game, and I wanted to go back to real quick whenever you said if you're going to like play it with the learning curve. If you plan on playing this, either try to either play with someone who's been playing it for a while and can explain stuff to you, like the characters and stuff. So if you don't feel like reading all of the characters or how what I would suggest doing is like go in there, try to like play around with an operator that you like and read about that operator that you're going to play as beforehand, just so that way you know how to kind of have an idea of how to play your character the best. And then if you're getting fucked on by somebody, you're like, this dude just came up behind me, snuck up, snuck up on me and killed me in a second. What the hell? It's probably not the game. It's probably Lancer, whose active ability is to run around an entire map silently Extremely until silent. our ability is gone. So if you get fucked on by an operator, just remember that operator. And then at the end of the game, read what they can do. Yeah. If you're playing by yourself. That's what I would suggest. Day, that might be an operator that you might want because they might adapt to your playstyle, right? If you're an extremely aggressive shooter kind of guy, yeah, Lancer might be your gal. That yeah. chick is fucking OD. <laughs> it just might be your style. I am more of a, uh, I, I do stay back a little bit, but I love to, to tank in, right? So I'm the guy, I'm the opener. I love that shit. I love to be the opener. Um, not because I can open it's just sometimes i grab one or two kills why not fuck it but i'm i'm an opener and i love to open lanes for my team and actually go through and that's the reason why i main cannon cannon is a great opener great lane opener if um, he is a breacher but uh, yeah so, no like so cannon for example he can mow down an entire team in a 45 degree angle so he loves taking out group targets that are close lancer is super op but she likes to flank and pick off one at a time her smg is not gonna be able to take out a whole team just like that like cannon is but like i said 45 degree angle if someone's at a at, uh cannon's 95 or 90 and pops him in the head he's pretty much yeah. done for pretty much you got to learn how to how to maneuver at least with cannon right if you're if you're a breacher if you're the type of person that likes to open you got to understand what your operator does you got to understand what your operator is capable of like for example my cannon i like I said i do 45 degree angle so if i want to go into another you know into another angle then i need to actually release my aim and move fast right because if not that's pretty much it because if you aim and you move it's going to be a slower aim it is a minigun so it's kind of realistic in a certain aspects but it's not at the same time so it's just one of those things where you got to understand what your operator actually does but we'll, we'll do you a solid if you're actually into the game and you want to actually get into the game you're more than welcome to come and check our actual uh streams it's going to be twitch.tv slash gucci army and twitch.tv slash arm warpath we my stream is going to be pretty much rogue dedicated every now and then i do like to play other games uh me and gucci we do love to branch out of course because we do have our podcast and we definitely want to branch out and explore other games uh but my my stream is going to be definitely more rogue company based i love the game i don't see me not playing it to be honest um even when i'm by myself i actually sit down and play and it has been a long time where i can sit down and easily go i'll play this game even if i yeah, get even yeah, if i get shit teammates yeah even if i get shit teammates i'm like yeah it's all right yeah also real quick he spelled my name wrong it's g-u-c-c-i i don't know oh, he must accidentally put that, that other eye in there no, no 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 problem and then like yeah like he was saying we play other games too just because uh we're not always streaming a different game doesn't mean that we're not playing it because we like to test out games a lot before we show it to you so two games one we're probably going to stream or at least i probably will stream is uh naraka blade point came to the xbox mm -hmm. game pass really it's really good. enjoying that game it's right good. now um <laughs> And then we tested out uh, Shadow Arena, I think it's called. Yes. Wasn't a huge fan, but I really like Pearl Abyss. That's who it's by. They make a great MMO. I could totally make a video to talk about that, but I don't know if how long I could actually play that game. Um, for right now, that'd be like a whole different yeah, it's, video it's, it's, rating it's on, that game. It's on They're, early access, so I mean, yeah. we can only give you a, a fair yeah. rating on the early access. Yeah. They got a, they got quite a bit to go yeah, to my yeah, personal they, standard of Pearl Abyss because they did a great job with uh, Black okay. Desert Online, their MMO. Yeah. And they're coming out. I am really have high expectations 
they're coming out with an RPG, um, I think 2023. So, yeah, no, I'm excited to see what Pearl Abyss does because they have one of the better MMOs when it comes to combat and graphics. Yeah, they're a good uh, Korean company. Yeah, I believe they're Korean. Company. Yeah. Granted, yeah. their Black Desert is really paid to win, but nevertheless, yeah. it's an amazing game. It's well made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just no, not it's, yeah, it's very good. Mm-hmm. That's what we got for you guys today. Um, average four out of five. It is definitely a must get game. Um, it's free to play. Yeah, it's free. It's free. To play. I mean, it's shit. Free. You know what I'm saying? For free? Yeah, for free, man. It, it is literally free 99. So get it, play it, and do what you guys think. See what you guys think. I think it's a. I think it's a great game. So that's my final final say on that one. Yeah, no, no. It was a good wrap up. I think uh, we pretty much touched on uh, the bare bones, everything we plan to talk to about Rogue Company. I know it's an amazing game, four out of five. I definitely would agree with that just because they have plenty of room to growth, but they got amazing backbones and they're really filling it in slowly but surely. And uh, I, actually, I don't know how, how slowly, slowly is because they're coming at you. And I think this is going to be the year that Rogue kind of takes over i can only see their community and everything going up from here so yeah no, i'm super happy with it developing a community since early access anyways yep uh, and now they're preaching out and uh shouting out uh creator contents people who stream it so man that's pretty hopefully cool. hopefully we'll be on there one yeah, day yeah one day you know what i'm saying i get that i'm on it i'm on it so yeah guys expect at least my stream per se to be very rogue company oriented all my emotes will will somewhat reflect all that stuff so Hopefully you guys will will be in there and and enjoy my content. And of course, as well, going to Gucci Army and enjoy his content. He is a very outgoing dude. Uh, I'm more of a chill kind of guy. So, you know, I'm I'm still working on my entertainment things, but it's because I do have a child and it's, I live in a small house right now. Uh, But once I move and I get my, my shed, you know, that I want and I'll be outside, it is on like a motherfucker, dude. I'm gonna be dancing, dude. I'm just gonna be shaking my foot everywhere, bro. I'm just... <laughs> it's, good. it's like a booty, but with mustache. <laughs> with mustache. I'm actually. <laughs> with a mustache. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get pants. I'm gonna get shorts with a mustache. That's oh, gonna be my thing. Yeah. The mustache on the butt. <laughs> yeah, on the butt. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm about to shake my mustache. What? You'll see. You'll see. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like I said, he's pretty laid back, but I, I try my best to get him riled up. There's not too often he's playing Rogue Company without me. So if you hear someone screaming somewhere randomly, that's probably a Gucci Army coming at you live. 100%. 100%. If, you, if I'm playing by myself Rogue, most likely you'll see me very, very casually, right? Just be like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah, bitch. But then you'll also hear me. Why are you not fucking pushing? Push! I just opened the lane. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, no. Those randos yeah, give man. you plenty, plenty to yell at. A hundred percent. So, yeah, all right. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you everyone joining, joining in. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Thank you very much. I appreciate it tons. Hey, catch this episode on YouTube. Um, we finally figure out the little kinks and whatnot. So, expect it on YouTube sometime today or tomorrow, most likely today. Actually, so I'm gonna be going into it right now, working on it. So, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it tons. Uh, we're your boys, the Timeless Gamers. I'm your man, Sergeant Warpath. Yep, appreciate you from this side, Gucci Army. Uh, pleasure as always. I'll catch you guys in the next podcast. Deuces. Peace.